Hey, thanks for watching Coffee with Pets. I do appreciate you stopping by and supporting my channel today. So today I'm going to be doing a follow-up on why food processing plants are exploding and catching on fire. So without further ado, let's get into it right now. The Coffee with Pips Show. The Coffee with Pips Show. The Coffee with Pips Show. America's favorite foodie, not it all. Welcome. Okay, so in a previous episode of Coffee with Pips, I talked about why uh, food plants, food processing plants are catching on fire because there seems like there's so many of them in 2022 alone. It, I mean, there's conspiracy theories out there. There's um, uh, news channels that are saying that all conspiracy theories are, are crazy. Conspiracy theorists are crazy and um, you're just spreading rumors and coming to conclusions when there's no evidence and this happens a lot. Well, you know what? I'm going to stay mutual on this because this is Coffee with Pips and I don't want to get political. Everybody can form their own opinions, but I'm not going to take a side either way, even though I... Yeah, something's up. I mean, I don't know what it is, but... Now let's talk about Bill Gates. Bill Gates and all the farmland. He's the largest farmland owner, even though some stories say, no, he's not. Well, he is. His representatives say that he diversified and bought all the farmland. So like I said, I'm going to just stay mutual and you figure it out for yourself. So I did a lot of research, a lot of research, and I'll tell you what I found. Because it's crucial and inherent to farmland, it also tends to have more consistent returns during a time of inflation, which we already know is here. Another scenario is like when traditional stocks depreciate and the farmland is appreciating. So there's more return on a dollar for farmland than there is for your average stock. Well, I'm sure that he doesn't have average stock. He has stock in a lot of companies that I'm sure a lot of us couldn't even afford a share for. But because you're investing in land itself, your investment is not only quite resistant to depreciation, but it also provides solid tax benefits. Of course, that's due to land ownership. It's a solid asset. It's not going anywhere. You're not investing in a building. You're investing in farmland. A building would decay over time. Farmland won't. There's a lot of benefits stacking up about farmland, but the biggest is performability. It outperforms traditional stocks, historically. His environmental bent also extends to agriculture. Gates has been investing in Beyond Meats, and Impossible Meats, and in his new book, How to Prevent Climate Disaster. Gates explains why beef cattle causes more harm emissions than any other form of agriculture. He hopes that beef substitutes will replace cattle, but yet tastes like beef. Well, come on, it's not, it, just because you don't like beef doesn't mean we all have to eat Impossible Burgers or Beyond Meat. It should be our choice. Now again, I'm not going to say where I stand. You know what? It sounds a little controlling already, doesn't it? I mean, the investments, uh, that makes sense. I mean, you're diversifying your, um, you know, cashing in on other opportunities. He sold off some of his Microsoft um, stock, but invested in the company that is also buying up the agriculture of the farmland, and which is another umbrella of his big investment firm, whatever. Well, you can tell I'm a real big fan of Bill Gates, but he doesn't have the right to say, 
I'm going to put good things on the table that I invested in and I'm going to make more money. How much money does he need? Well, you know what? Done with that. I am not a Bill Gates fan. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, brother, I don't even want to talk about this, but might as well throw it in since we're here. Well, everybody knows on June 17th, 2,000 heads of cattle perished during the heat wave in Kansas City. They said it was a perfect storm. The heat was over 104 degrees, and it was very humid and no wind. So, there you go. Is that a coincidence? Maybe not. I mean, uh, who knows? That I guess it happens. Um, you know, ranchers aren't required to report cattle deaths. So take it for what it is. I don't know. Officials said that there's a lot of conspiracy theorists out there that are uh, saying other things. Well, you know what? I don't know. All I know is it just seems like it's just the perfect storm with empty shelves, the um, tugs not being able to get food in, unemployment, um, chickens dying. Oh, I got to tell you about that in a second. And all the fires and food processing plants. I mean, it all lines up, right? This perfect storm. But again, I don't know. But I do know that fire killed tens of thousands of chickens that have avian bird flu. Officials said that this is the biggest outbreak they've seen in many years. The bird flu, the largest one was in 2015. 50 million perished. So if they burned down uh, the whole entire building with the chickens in them to get rid of them, that was a stupid idea. May 28th, in Wright County, Minnesota, a massive fire consumed a barn at an egg processing plant, killing thousands of chickens. This is a producer of eggs, a lot of our eggs. So guess what? Egg prices are up. I just checked to 69 a dozen. So from wherever you are watching, that might be reasonable, but it isn't here. Actually, I'm not an egg eater either. On January 13th, an explosion of fire damaged a Cargill neutrino plant in Louisiana. On February 3rd, 2022, fire destroyed part of the Wisconsin River's meat site in Mauston. On February 22nd, 2022, a propane boiler explosion caused a fire that destroyed the Shurer's food potato chip plant in Northeast Oregon. On March 16th, the fire caused extensive damage to a new production line dedicated to hot pockets at a Nestle plant in Jonesboro, Arkansas. On March 16th, a major fire hit the 1.2 million square foot Walmart Fulfillment Center in Plainfield, Indiana. On March 23rd, in the middle of the night, a fire broke out on the roof of the General Mills processing plant in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. On March 28th, Maricopa Food Pantry, a local food bank in Arizona, lost 50,000 pounds worth of food in a fire that occurred just 15 minutes after their food bank closed, according to a CBS affiliate. March 31st, at Rio Fresh Onion Packing Facility in San Juan, Texas, it was the largest fresh onion packing facility in the region. On April 12th, a major fire broke out at New Hampshire's East Conway Beef and Pork Slaughterhouse. On April 13th, the Taylor Farms California Food Service Production Facility in Salinas, California burned almost to the ground. On April 14th, a small plane crashed into the Gem State Food Processing Plant in Hayburn, Idaho. Jesus. On April 19th, the headquarters of Azure Standard, the nation's premier independent distributor of organic and healthy food, was destroyed by fire. Wow. On April 27th, it was being reported that nearly a dozen wildfires had just roared through key agriculture areas of Nebraska. 
April 30th, a fire broke out at the Purdue Farms facility in South Norfolk area of Chesapeake, North Carolina. June 17th, Festa Foods, Pizzas, and Appetizers near Wapaka, Wisconsin. Okay, so all this in the wake of our food shortage. So now prices have gone up, there's food shortages, and now this keeps happening. So, okay, so all the sites I have listed below that are debunking that the conspiracy theorists are crazy. Well, they didn't come out right out and say they're crazy. They're just saying pretty much they're overreacting. Okay, so all I can say is, you know, we're going to get through this together. We're going to get through this together. It's all going to be good. We'll make it good. We are going to do just fine. Thank you, everybody, and have a great week.